Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is a new feature found in Power Automate Desktop called Extract Text Using OCR. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this is important. So naturally organizations are expecting automation to become more and more intelligent. The idea that automation is nothing new if you are writing a bunch of code in order to inspect different, say, documents and, and data before you go ahead and automate it downstream. But there's always these data sources where humans generally need to go ahead and look at the information and then make some sort of the decision and then go ahead and extract that information. So oftentimes this will come in the form of, say, like a PDF document or uh, some other binary object like an image or even a Word document itself. And so using artificial intelligence, that is sort of the goal. That's what everyone is chasing because you can actually make your automation processes more intelligent by being able to leverage AI. Now, naturally, optical character recognition, OCR, is one of those AI disciplines. It's been around for, for years, um, but naturally how you can make that more accessible, more democratized, that is the goal for a lot of vendors out there today. Now, as part of the April release, April 2021 release, Microsoft introduced a new action in Power Automate Desktop called Extract Text Using OCR that allows us to go ahead and extract text from an image or from a binary. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. And then I also wanted just to share that AI Builder also provides some OCR capabilities. So if you are just bound to Cloudflows or perhaps you don't have a Power Automate desktop license, that could be an option for you where you can go ahead and do something quite similar but using AI Builder as opposed to what I'm gonna walk you through here shortly. Now, in terms of a demo, um, what I've done is I've gone out and scraped or just grabbed a bunch of arbitrary images off the internet and we're gonna actually put them through the paces inside of Power Automate Desktop and go ahead and see what the result is. So a bit of a spoiler, this was a, an image I just grabbed off of the Ford.com website. And we can see that we've got this text here um, in the upper left-hand corner. And using the action, it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna be able to extract that information. Uh, and then naturally we have the ability to go ahead and use it downstream. Now, I do wanna caution here that this technology is still emerging, right? There's not perfection when it comes to this technology, but I think what you're gonna find is that all in all, the outcome was actually pretty good. Even in this simple example here, the outcome is pretty good, but you do want to ensure that you are building in some sort of assertions or checking the outcome of your OCR process just to validate that information. Because, you know, mileage is totally going to vary. Every data source is gonna be a little bit different and uh, so all in all, it is quite promising, but do, don't do make any assumptions that this is going to be 100% accurate. That just uh, well, isn't realistic. So let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo. Okay, so I am in Power Automate Desktop. I've created a new desktop flow. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and create an instance of an OCR engine. And so the reason for that is when we go ahead and use this new action, it is going to be one of the input parameters, right? Give me the variable for the OCR engine itself. Now, in terms of the OCR engines that we have available to us, we have this Tesseract, and then we also have Modi. Now, Modi, I haven't had a whole lot of good experience with it. It is quite dated. Uh, this goes back to like Office 2010. And so I've opted to use the Tesseract OCR engine instead. So I went ahead, dragged this onto my desktop flow, and then I've got some additional parameters that I can use here. Naturally, I'm gonna be focused on English, but there is some support for some additional languages here as well. And then I've chosen to use the default um, image width multiplier and image height multiplier. I've left those as is. And then a variable will be produced automatically if you wanna change the name. You certainly have the ability to go ahead and do that, but um, I've just left it as the default. Now, what I've got here is I've got five different examples of how we can go ahead and extract text with OCR. And I thought I would just give you some insights in terms of like how accurate this is and then you can kind of make up uh, your own mind in terms of whether or not this would be useful for you or not. And what we're gonna see here is we've got the output variables for each one of them. And so that's where we'll be able to compare the output from Power Automate Desktop versus the image itself 
and we can then go ahead and make that comparison. So when we go ahead and drag this action over onto our desktop flow, we are going to use an OCR engine here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in that variable. And then we do have a few options here. We can go ahead and try to extract this information from a screen, from a foreground window. I've chosen just to go ahead and extract the data from an image on, on disk. And so what I've done here is I've got a folder with some files in it. And then here, my search mode, I'm going to go ahead and select whole of specified source. Perhaps there's um, you know, a larger source or a larger surface area and you wanna just focus on a particular area. That probably makes a lot of sense. If you do have a lot of text and you know that the text you're interested in is a certain part of the, the image, that would make sense to go after that subregion. You're probably gonna see some improved accuracy as a result. Then I'm gonna have some variables that are produced. And in this case, it's going to be called Bronco Sport. And then I've got all of these other options here on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and let's just run this through. It'll run quite quickly. And then what we'll do is we'll provide that comparison between the images themselves and the outputs that we see that are being generated here. Okay, so here are the, here's the folder, here's the related images. Let's go ahead and start with the first one, the Bronco Sport. And if we put these side by side, we're gonna go ahead and see that we've got the text, it's time to take the reins. The all new Bronco Sport has arrived. So that's good news. Now we do have this go wild and this arrow here. Uh, let's just scroll down and see what happens uh, with that specific text. Here we can see that it did detect some, some data here, but it didn't do a great job of parsing it. So that is a little disappointing, but I can kind of see maybe this, um, you know, this arrow, which represents, you know, clicking a link caused some confusion here, but maybe that's relevant, maybe it's not. Um, but that's sort of the, the Rosen result from that. So the next example is uh, from CNBC. I was just on CNBC's website and essentially just saw this particular image and said, okay, this could be interesting to see. So what we can see is kind of similar to what we saw before. The, we did very good in a lot of this sort of the text that's very prominent, right? So SoftBank backed Grab agrees to deal to go public in world's largest SPAC. Now, what gets a little bit, I think what is a little bit confusing here is that it sees this image that's on essentially what looks like a wall or a window here, you know, with a, you know, calls out grab. And so as a result, it actually, I believe, confuses things here. I believe like it sees this A here and thinks it's an at symbol itself. So definitely um, some confusion when we had some background information that is also text. So I can kind of understand where this one gets a little bit difficult to. So here's another example from the Ford.com website. And this one, it actually does quite well. Uh, so we're able to go ahead and extract all of this text. It does ignore the get out there piece, but the rest of the text is, is parsed uh, quite accurately. So that's definitely good news to see. It was able to go ahead and extract that information. Okay, and then the next example is I was able to go ahead and, and extract this information off of a real estate website in the States called Redfin. And so here you can see it was able to go ahead and pull all of the related text, right? So the price, uh, the number of bedrooms, the square footage, and the location as well. It does look like at the end, it did get cut off here in terms of like the full address. Uh, it doesn't show up below here, but all in all, it did a pretty good job of extracting sort of the core information from that perspective. Okay, so our last example here. Now this one is quite difficult. Um, and as a result, we don't see any output actually generated. And I can kind of see why. Like we do have, you know, essentially multiple bubbles here. Um, we've got a lot going on. We've got, you know, packaging and we've got like the actual barbecue or the grill itself. And so this one, unfortunately, there wasn't anything that was returned, but this just goes back to my point that like this technology continues to be emerging. And so you do need to include some safeguards in your processes to make sure that you are not going to just assume that you're going to get text all of the time and then try to load that into downstream processes. I think this is very much where you get into that human in the loop scenario where you would go ahead and do some sort of assertion like the length of text. 
Um, you know, if you've done some testing and you're seeing some funny characters, testing for funny characters that have been loaded there. And then if you're not sure of the data that's being returned, then you basically offload that process and get it into a queue that a human can go ahead and look at. I think that's the key here. Uh, this technology, regardless of the, the types of uh, tools you're using, is not 100% perfect. And so as a result, you need to sort of balance expectations with that and then build strategies that help overcome it. It doesn't mean that you can't still get value from this. Even if you were doing 80% accuracy, like that is, that's huge benefits from a productivity perspective. But do think about those fallback strategies of how you'd want to engage a human um, if you don't get the desired outcome from the execution itself. All right, so thanks for checking out another episode on the channel. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and do so at Weirzy. Uh, thanks for checking out this video on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Likes and comments are also always appreciated as well. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you next week on the channel. Take care.